Okay, so, so far we've been saying that we represent forces in statics as vectors, these quantities, these mathematical quantities called vectors. And these vectors have both a magnitude and the direction. And the magnitude is the amount of force and the direction is the orientation of that force relative to some sort of a reference frame. And the reference frame that we're going to be using in this course is just our 2D and our 3D a Cartesian coordinate system. So if you're familiar with the x-axis and the y-axis, that's your 2D Cartesian coordinate system. And for the 3D, there's an extra axis, the z-axis, which is going in and out of the plane of the x and the y. Now I did say that a vector has a magnitude, and that magnitude is essentially the length of the vector. And when we need to specify magnitude, well, we do it this way. So we have a vector, let's say a, and I draw the little arrow up top and I say that, hey, this is a vector. So you know that I'm going to present you with a magnitude of that vector and a direction. Now, the magnitude we specify as this. We draw two lines, one on either side of the character, and this right here represents the magnitude of A. Now, the magnitude is the length of the vector. So if I drew an arbitrary vector here and I said, hey, this is vector A, the magnitude of A is going to be the length of the vector, so this length right here. And because it's a length, the magnitude cannot be negative. So the actual value, the magnitude of A, is never negative. Now we can represent negative vectors. So if I said, hey, let's take A and let's make it negative. So I said, hey, I have a vector that is negative A. Negative A means we're just taking this vector right here and we're switching its direction. So here it's going up and to the right, and then negative A would be going down and to the left. Now you'll notice in both of these cases, here positive A and here negative A, that the length of the vector, the length of the vector is still the same. So whether we take the magnitude of A or we take the magnitude of negative A, you'll notice that both of these values are going to be the same. They're just going to be some length a. Awesome, so let's say in a kind of a different example, we had some sort of a particle here. I'm just gonna draw this tiny little particle here, and on this particle we had two vectors. Uh, we had this first vector here, which I'll call vector a, and then we had another vector here called vector b. These two vectors are acting on this little particle that we drew here. A is pulling the particle up and to the right, and then B is pulling it also to the right, but downwards a little bit. And you'll notice that B is a little bit smaller than A. So the magnitude, just from looking at this picture, if we drew this picture to scale, we would say that the magnitude of A is greater than the magnitude of B, just by looking at this drawing here. And that's why it's very important to draw vectors to scale if we are doing some sort of graphical comparison or graphical addition of vectors. Now, because both of these vectors are acting or these forces are acting on this particle, you can see that the particle might go to the right, but it might go upwards a little bit. Why? Because A is stronger than B. Both A and B are pointing to the right, but because A is a little bit larger, you'll notice that the particle here is going to go somewhere or somewhere like that. Now, to be more specific, we can use different tools and methods to figure out this resultant force, right, the resultant force of these two vectors acting on this particle. The very first one, and we'll go over many of these in, in different examples after this video, but the first way is to use these two vectors A and B and draw a parallelogram to find out the resultant force. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing this little dashed line which is equal in length or magnitude to vector A and it's also parallel to vector A. And I'm going to do the same thing for B. I'm going to take B and I'm going to start drawing a dashed line and the length of that dashed line is going to be the same length of B and it's going to be parallel to B. Now at the point where these two intersect, so right here, we can draw a resultant force that goes from the particle to that intersection and that is our resultant force which I will call vector R. Now, the important thing to remember about this resultant vector that we found, in this case R, is that the resultant will have the same effect on this particle as A and B did separately. So we can represent 
a and b by this resultant vector r, and that is what we mean when we say we need to add two vectors, two or more, to figure out their resultant force. So this right here is an example of vector addition, where we said r, the vector r, is equal to vector a plus vector b. So to think about this a little bit more intuitively, I'm going to do another very, very similar example. But in this example, I'm going to have a particle right here, and I'm going to draw two vectors. Now, these vectors are going to have the same magnitude, and they are going to have somewhat of the same direction, except they're going to be mirrored. So this vector right here I'll call vector A, and this vector right here I'll call vector B, and I will say that the magnitude of these two vectors are the same. Now, just for reference, if I drew a horizontal line passing through the particle and I said that vector A was acting at 30 degrees above this line and vector B was acting at 30 degrees below that line, then intuitively you could see that if we were to find the resultant of these two vectors, it would be along this line and it would be pulling the particle exactly to the right. And the way that you can tell is that, well, if you looked at each vector separately and you looked at their different components, so the force of that vector acting along a specific axis, you can see that, well, for vector A, if vector A is here, its Y component is going to be here. It's going to be acting exactly upwards. And for B, it's also going to be acting along that same line vertically, but it's going to act downwards. And because I said A and B have the same magnitude, these two vectors or components are going to cancel out. And all we're left with is the X component of A and the X component of B, and they're both acting to the right. So our resultant vector, I will just again call R, and that vector is going to be acting to the right. Okay, cool, so this is the process of adding vectors. And you'll notice that the vectors that we drew here for both this example and this example, those all had positive vectors. So vector A here and B were positive, A and B here were positive. What if, well, what if one of the vectors were negative? So let's go back to this example right here. And to the right here, this is where I'll do some of the drawings. Uh, if I took that same particle here and I said, well, I'll keep A the same. So A could be going up and to the right a little bit here, just like it was originally. And instead of vector B being positive, vector B is going to be negative. And so instead of the vector going down and to the right, it's going to be going up and to the left. And so the way that we draw that is just like this. It's going to have the same orientation, but it's going to be going in the other direction. And I'm going to say that this is negative b. So this is a negative vector. Now, if I took this vector and I wanted to find what the resultant of a plus negative b was, so the resultant is going to be a plus negative b, or simply a minus vector b. Now, this resultant isn't going to be this original resultant that we found here when we did the example for the first time. You can kind of tell it's going to be somewhere here. And the way that we find out is we can use, again, the tail to tip method. So if I took this vector B right here, and I took its tail, and I added it to the tip of A, you can see now that when I draw this resultant vector, it's going to end right there. And so this vector, which again, I'll call vector R, this resultant vector, this new resultant vector, you can see that its Y component right here is going to be a lot larger than the Y component of it for this previous example. And this was simply just changing the orientation of vector B. So far, we've been just adding two vectors together to get a resultant force, just like we did here, here, and here. Now, the great thing about vector addition is that you could have any number of vectors acting on a particle. If I had a particle right here and I said, well, let's, instead of adding two vectors, let's add three. Let's get a little bit more challenging. And I said this was vector A, which is pointing up and to the right. We had another vector called vector B, which in magnitude is a little bit less than A, but it's acting uh, down into the right, and then we had another vector here that was vector C. 
So again, if we were to find the resultant vector of these three vectors, there's so many ways to do it. But the most important thing is that we want to take these vectors and we want to add them graphically or using law of sines and cosines or any other method to find the resultant vector. And the cool thing about vector addition is that we can add vectors in whichever order. So if we wanted to figure out what the resultant uh, vector for a, b, and c was, we could add a plus b plus c, which would look something like this. If I took b and I added it to the tip of a, and then I took c, and then I added that to the tip of b, you can see that the resultant vector is going to be from the original point all the way to the end of c. Now, what if I wanted to add a plus c plus b? So instead of adding b first after a, I would add c. Again, same deal. I would take the tail of c and add it to the tip of a, and then I would take the tail of b and add it to the tip of c. And if I drew out the resultant vector here, you can see that, well, these two vectors, this r vector here and this r vector here, these two vectors right here are exactly the same. They're gonna have the same magnitude and they're going to have the same direction. So again, it doesn't matter how you add vectors, there's different ways of adding vectors, but you'll always get the same resultant force. 